Hello, today is a follow-up video of last time where I showed you how you can create a custom GitHub action in JavaScript. Things that you do only when you don't find what you need inside uh, GitHub Marketplace, or if you don't find what you can extend to use directly inside your project. And today, what I want to show you is how you can create your own checks. So the idea is to continue to build the action but also to use some of the API to, for example, when your readme file doesn't start with a title, put an error and also point the user to the file and to the specific line in the file. This is typically what you see when you have some UD testing failing or some other error coming from the source code. So for this, we will be using the same workflows as, before, as last time. Test my actions, very basic except that we are pointing to the test branch into the check file action um, uh, repository. So the thing we have to do with the existing code, creating a new branch. Let's create the test branch and start to modify the index.js file to uh, check if the readme file contains the title at the beginning. And for this, as you can see, I am in a VS Code, I will use Copilot. Copilot will help me to write some code, build some methods, and do all the if then else statements that I need. So I am adding the commands to create a function that check if the file start with a markdown header, a markdown title. So function is created adding some uh, information to it. And now read the file, look at the content. If the content start with uh, the title, it's okay. If not, I return false and I put the action in a failed state. But it's not sufficient. What I have to do also is to remove all the blank lines at the beginning of the file. Instead of removing also only the blank line at the beginning, I will use once again Copilot to generate some code to remove all the empty lines of my file. Uh, not exactly what I want, so instead of doing this, I will just uh, use another command, more precise, and use regular expression to remove the lines. So remove empty lines at the beginning of the file. As you can see, files contents replace with a regular expression generated by Copilot. This is quite useful, this is very nice. So now I just need to use this new function in my code and that's it. It will fail if the readme file doesn't contain a title. So let's commit and push the code and test the workflow now. So let's add, commit, and push. And we can now, when it's done, go to GitHub and call the workflow that is pointing to the uh, test, main, test branch. And we will see, and we should see, the um, uh, workflow to failing because the readme file doesn't start with a title but with some random string. So it's running and failing. If we look at it, readme file doesn't start with a header. And if we look into the log, we see the license is here, the readme is here, but we have an error based on the new code that we have added. So let's modify the readme file in a new branch and remove uh, the string and only keep blank line on the title at the beginning of the file to see if our logic is working as expected. So the pull request is created. It will run the workflow again, but this time with a new readme file. Running, get the information, and everything is green. File exists, and the readme file starts with a header. This is great, but if we go back to the workflow with an error, 
it's great, but we don't know exactly where, where is the error and I have to find in my code which file I have to modify and so on. This one is clear, but imagine if it's a unit testing and so on. So let's now modify the uh, actions to directly point to the file. And for this, we will test in the code if the check file with header returning false, we will add some logic to create what we call a check using GitHub API. And this check will have some annotation about the line on the file that has been, has been um, where the issue is. For this, we need to connect to GitHub API. And for this, we need a token. But uh, for, so let's create a new token, a new input parameter to the action using uh, the action YAML file. Add some inputs repo token, default values, and we will set the default value to the github.token. github.token. Because we have the default value, we have nothing to change in existing workflows. The token will be sent by the workflow to my action. So let's go back to the index.js and add some logic once again using Copilot. So I want to create an Octokit client get Octokit using the token. And next, I want to call Octokit to create a check. So I just have to add some commands to my JavaScript and let Copilot help me. So he wants to create a variable or a constant. I want to call directly the API. So let's change the command to call Octokit to create a check with annotation on details. As you can see now, I wait Octokit checks created and I use Copilot to simply add all the parameters that I need, including the context. So you see the repo, the owners, the conclusion that is a failure. And I create the output object that contains the title, the summary, but also the annotations. The annotations, it's what I wanted to show you. It's a part that will point to a file, to a specific line on a specific columns. Remember that we are using the REST API, so we have to use octokit.rest in this case. And I am changing some of the values that will be visible to the user, like the name, the readme formatter, or validator changing the title, changing the summary to have a user-friendly message or a more detailed message, and doing the same in the annotation. We are all set. We have, when the file doesn't start with a title, we create a check with some annotations and we post that using Octokit to GitHub. So let's do the commit, let's push the code into uh, GitHub. We go now to the repository and we refresh or we run the workflow. We still have the error, but if we go to the readme validator message, we have more information. We can see the annotations exactly with the file, the message, but I can check also or click on this annotation and jump directly into the file on the line that has been pointing into the annotation. As you can see, using this simple API, I am able to give a lot of information to the user about what's going wrong, what is wrong in my workflow, what is wrong in my action. This is one of the many API you can use when you build actions. So before closing this video, let's uh, summarize what we have seen in these two videos. So what we have seen is to create a new GitHub Actions, you have two options. One with a Docker file, what I've not showed, but using a simple JavaScript project. And in this project, you add an actions.yaml that describes your actions, that contains some of the metadata used uh, by the workflow to understand what happened uh, when you read and what do you have to execute for the actions, the input and output parameters. Also, when you start to build your action with JavaScript, you need to import some of the API. So some of the dependencies like actions core, actions GitHub API, 
And for example, we have used in this example, checks on annotations to give information back to the user when something uh, is raising an exception. Then to deploy, you just have to push that in a repository and you can consume it using the use uh, command into your workflows YAML. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions or any ideas about the next video, just give me a command and I will be pleased and I will be happy to write on something for you.